Panzer Dragoon Saga was a great way to wrap up both the Panzer Dragoon trilogy on the Saturn, as well as the Saturn as a whole. But for a long time after its release, it very much appeared like that was going to be it for the franchise. After making that fantastic RPG, the original Panzer Dragoon development team within Sega, known as Team Andromeda, was unfortunately disbanded. And I don't think anyone expected to ever see another game in the series. But the stars just happened to align perfectly, and a new division within Sega, Smilebit, was given the chance to take another stab at the franchise on the original Xbox, after the Dreamcast had been discontinued. The result? Panzer Dragoon Orda, the game that still stands to this day as the final conclusion to the storied series. But does it live up to that legacy? Orda is indisputably a return to rail shooting tradition after Saga. Whether you think that's a good thing or not is ultimately going to come down to personal preference, but I do wonder if we would have seen Smilebit take on a larger RPG like Saga if Orda had financially succeeded, following essentially the same pattern that had been followed back on the Saturn, with a few rail shooters followed by a large-scale RPG. Frankly, though, this was a point in time where rail shooters were not really well appreciated by most of the game-playing public, who saw them as a relic of the previous generation, and I don't know if it was ever really in the cards for this game to be a huge commercial success, no matter how good it was. When it comes to mechanics, at least, it might be mostly for the best if we don't think too much about Saga, and simply treat Orda as a follow-up to Zwei. If we do that, Orda is a fantastic sequel that expands on its predecessor in a ton of really smart and fun ways, while also borrowing things from Saga where it makes the most sense. This inconsistent taking of inspiration from the most disparate entry in the series, however, leaves you wanting more of it. If they were willing to take this one cool thing, why not this other thing? But that way lies madness and shattered dreams, so let's move on. One of the biggest things that Orda sort of borrows from Saga is its swappable forms, which it adds to the rail shooter formula for the first time. Zwei had the evolutions, but you couldn't switch between them. You had sort of light, medium, and heavy attacks that can be swapped between on the fly, instead of those slow form evolutions that Zwei had. Now, instead, you level the individual forms by collecting in-game items that appear as you shoot down enemies and levels. That essentially means the more you use each form, the more it'll level up and the better it'll get. There are three main modes your dragon can be in at any given time. Glide mode, base mode, and heavy mode. Glide mode is faster and more nimble, but can take less damage and does less damage in turn. Heavy mode is slow and lumbering, but does a massive amount of damage. And base mode is in the middle of the road, uh, somewhere between the two, just your normal mode, for a lack of a better term. Another mechanic on loan from Saga is the ability to reposition yourself around some bosses, making the game slightly less on rails and allowing for another form of projectile dodging. This is enabled by a new gliding mechanic that allows you to speed up or slow down slightly to change your trajectory temporarily in order to dodge incoming obstacles, bringing the Saga repositioning mechanic seamlessly into the real-time nature of a rail shooter very neatly reversing the process that Saga used to adapt rail shooter mechanics into those of an RPG. There are a lot of things in order that make it less frustrating than its predecessor, like a restart at boss option at the end of levels, in addition to the ability that Zwei also had to save between chapters. There's also an extensive tutorial to check out the new mechanics, very helpful if you're entirely new to the series especially, though it can be a bit tedious at times since it's entirely text and you mostly don't have control except during very specific parts of it. It does, however, maintain its difficulty for the most part, even in some ways more than Zwei did, as long as you play on an appropriate difficulty. Restarted Boss keeps you at whatever health you're at going into the boss, 
It is slightly forgiving on some difficulties, giving you a minimum amount of health for the boss, but the developers were careful that it didn't just become a free ticket to beating the boss. And so it forces you to pick whether you'd rather do the entire level again to try and get to the boss with more health or continue banging your head against it, hopefully eventually perfecting its patterns enough to get through it with the low amount of health that you have. Orta embraces a still somewhat new emergent trend of the time, that of action games everywhere focusing more and more on story, a trend that would only continue through to today. There is often a massive amount of exposition between the game's episodes, focusing on the game's protagonist who shares her name with the title, Orta. You do get much more in the way of storytelling than you ever got in the original game or so why, though still nowhere near as much as you'd get in a full-blown RPG like Saga. Still, Orta even has a massive encyclopedia that you can peruse that explains all the terminology being thrown around, an additional addition to a series that has seemingly prided itself on being obtuse in the past, requiring deep dives into the many books that littered the shelves of every settlement in Saga. Still, overall, Orta is pretty story light when compared to Saga, and even more importantly, takes the story in some pretty disappointing directions after the ending to Saga. Essentially, if this had followed directly after Zwei, I think its story would be looked at a whole lot more favorably. But as it is, it barely holds a candle to Saga, and I would have preferred if it hadn't spent much time on story at all, much as Zwei and the original game did. Instead of attempting to follow up directly on Saga's story, why not set it so far in the future that it doesn't matter? Orta is a great game of its type, but it's also only a few hours long, and in their efforts to make it easier to attract more players, they also ultimately lower the amount of time someone would actually play it. One of the reasons I loved the original Panzer Dragoon, and Zwei to a lesser extent, was that it was absolutely willing to challenge you to learn its patterns. Now, ultimately, that just turned a one-hour game into a four-hour game, and one that could be incredibly frustrating at that, but it was also very rewarding when you were finally able to get through the challenge you were being presented with. In Orta, the only real difficulty spike I hit was the final boss at the very end of the game. The game being short does have its benefits as well. The levels the game does contain have a lot of variety, and I never got bored with the diverse selection of enemies. Unlike the earlier Saturn games, you can almost always tell what everything you're shooting at actually is before it's directly in your face. The game does look great in general, especially in back compat on the modern Xbox consoles, which is where all of this footage is coming from. It's been significantly visually enhanced, and while I still have a soft spot for the early polygonal styles of the earlier games, these visual improvements go hand in hand with the scale and spectacle so important to the Panzer Dragoon games. And they allow the developers to make something that still looks pretty incredible today. Honestly, I think in this form, it looks better than the Panzer Dragoon remake that came out in 2020. It certainly has much more of a defined style, and one that I think modern reimaginings of the older Panzer Dragoon games would be served quite well to adopt. All the footage in this video was recorded off an Xbox Series X, and using a modern Xbox is absolutely the best way to play this game, as is the norm for the upscaled original Xbox games that are available on the platform. Everything is very cleanly upscaled, looks great, and makes the game incredibly easy to grab off the Xbox store and check out, which I think this game is fully deserving of. I also think, personally, I still prefer both the first game and Zwei, but Orta is a thorough and impressive modernization of the ideas of those games in a package that is far better than any of the more modern interpretations of the series that have come out so far.